Hello everyone and welcome to the final part of Resident Evil 8. It's time to uh, finish Chris's section and get that bitch Miranda. <laughs> so for this entire section so far there's been nothing really to explore or find. And then they just throw a random go to warding in there. Um, no, along they the way. don't, do they? Yes, it, yes yeah, they in the do. Last, in the last little bit of the in the last little bit of the game, there's one at the bottom. Here oh, that's you cruel. Beat the, uh, you yeah. can't see it either. You have to go to a corner that you normally wouldn't look at and then really squint to see it. Yeah, it's like what right after this boss fight. You get all the goats. Um, it's, You're a it's, wizard, it, it, Chris. It, it's a challenge that gets you a <laughs> fuck lot of points for unlockables, so basically whatever you can afford with those points is what you get. Um... It now, something, is something I didn't realize about this dude um, until I did my hardcore playthrough was that you can take him down with just your bullets. Yeah, yeah you can. can. Which I didn't know that. I thought you point, had to hit so. him three times, like the, with the um, nope. the thing, like with nope. the tree. As long as you shoot him enough times in the back, you can kill him with just Chris. It's just the no, the, the, the arena sucks. It's another enemy you've done again. It's a character that plays the same as Ethan. It's a character that I don't like. I don't know. I don't like this bit either. Well, I mean, it's a it's a tense enough boss fight. It's the one time you're actually gonna feel challenged as Chris in normal mode. But yeah, look how close um, you are, though. Like it's just such a shit. Very arena. classic Resident Evil One boss design. Hum humongous boss and a very close for the Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Chris's yeah. speciality. But like, yeah. oh, <laughs> but like, yeah. Also, he has the fucking giant mall from Silent Hill Three. So we're hitting all of the notes. Can you just point that pointed. thing anywhere as long as you hold it? Does it matter where it's pointing? It needs to be, like, uh, on or close to him. I think there's a little bit of hitbox leeway where it won't lose its speed, but if you turn it too far away... I hope not, considering the giant fucking satellite. Yeah, but if you turn it too far away from him, it will lose its target and you'll have to start over. Um, so watch out. You just have to look for the right time to start aiming it at him. Ow. So is the idea Ow. with this dude just in a story sense that he's like the daddy werewolf essentially and they've like based all the lichens off of him is that the idea? I I don't think there's a story behind these two other than the fact that they're two brothers who happen to turn into fucking big werewolves but uh, I, I don't know I don't remember there being a specific file about these guys I, in fact I think I only ever saw their names on a wiki so I like how the swinging hammer just loses all momentum as as he crystallizes. Yeah, it should have landed right on top of Chris. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's very convenient. Thank you. What if it just what what if in the middle of that like it stopped and then crumbled and then fell on your head? <laughs> the the night vision thing is a thing that that Chris had in in Not a Hero, I think. So that's a thing. Um, Hello, I'm the British one. <laughs> I told you to stop doing that. <laughs> there it I like, is. Gee, I wonder what this is shaped like. I like how the reason we win is because Chris just so happens to walk, just so happens to find the fucking mutamycete, like on and and attach a bomb to it on his way through. I mean, so this thing powers the mold, or the it's yeah. basically the it's basically the brain of all the mold. Uh, it's the database, but in it's which... technically a different mold from the mold from seven. Yeah, and no, well, it's, it's the, the mold same from mold, seven but the, came from this one. Uh, the mold from seven came from here. It was just genetically modified. Yeah, by it was modified company. and then put into Evelyn. But the fact that the mutamycete is here actually explains why that Ethan was able to have his stupid vision dream with uh, with uh, uh, with Jack Baker and um, Zoe in, uh, toward the end of the last game where Jack Baker asked him to, to um, you know, do the that's the best bit of that game so. I think yeah, um, yeah. It's uh, like uh, you never imagine that they could be humanized, and then it's like, oh yeah, they were normal people. And I know Resident Evil does that with like the documents and stuff, but that's the first time it's been blatantly like shown off. Like it's like it's like if you saw Lisa Trevor before and after. Anyway, here's where you find um, book files on on the four lords, and I, I, I it took me a moment to to ask myself. Why am I looking at fucking Dungeons and Dragons ancient tomes here? And then I'm like, oh, she's 100 years old. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, What's funny yeah. about this whole bit here is that, like, despite the fact I, don't, I didn't like Miranda and I didn't like this whole ending portion of the game just in general, this room 
is so lore heavy and really cool to read through. But it, it, it also kind of, it kind of sticks out. It's like it's it doesn't kind of fit, but it's an, it, it doesn't fit in a good way. But like it's just weird. It's just here. It also does more of that characterizing Miranda as a complete and absolute nerd because not only did she write these files about her experiments, but she went to the trouble of having these custom made, really expensive leather and leather. metal yeah. book covers for the books right. yeah. and that are all, that all have the four lords oh, emblems right. on them, and. How did she yeah. get the townspeople to think she was a god, though? Because it seems like she, she was... She can save shift and all this shit. <laughs> Look, okay, reminder, fine, reminder, reminder, she was also... There, there, this also started back in, like, the 1910s. People were still really, you know... Yeah, they're, they're a secluded rural town, and rural towns are historically the most uh, susceptible to, like, their, their own independent pagan folklore. So, uh, yeah. Oh, hey, Mia, sorry for shooting you yesterday. I'm glad you saved me. I just look, can't get over how either. I just can't get over how motionless the rest of Chris's face is. It's like this is these are the most like obviously hand animated faces in the entire game. And I don't know why. Like maybe the sequence was rushed out at the end. I don't know. That would explain why Chris doesn't really have anything to set him apart gameplay wise, like he did in seven, but you can't leave me here. You promised, damn it. But, like, <laughs> the only way I can make Mia's face in this scene, like, work in my brain is that she's just so tired that she can't emote. Her eyes are so frozen and lifeless right now. They're not moving with the, they're not moving with the rest of her face. It, it's it's dis disturbing. Maybe she's just got, you know, you know when you get cold and then your muscles seize up in your face. Maybe it's just that. I can it's very freezing down there. Like, she does start to have more facial movement in the ending scene, but here it's just like they both don't do that. Come on. It's not safe here after all. Yeah. <laughs> he was going to oh, yeah. leave her here because, like, he thought maybe she'd be safe. As if he forgot that he planted a big fucking bomb on the giant <laughs> pulsating <laughs> fungus heart two rooms to the left. Let this yeah, man be in charge of anything. And I don't he, know. He gets in. He gets in the helicopter, presses the button, blows it up. It's like I think I'm forgetting something. Just He's, cuts to me a Chris. Ah! <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm I'm imagining all of his thought processes in that stupid fucking Resident Evil One voice that John likes to imitate. Um, which one? Yeah, which one? Which one? <laughs> you know the one. I don't. The one you were doing through the entire Resident Evil One playthrough. Oh, because, yeah, because Chris is the same voice actor as uh, Richter Belmont from Seventh Night. Yeah, that's No I mean. way! Yeah. I like this scene. This scene is so freaking good. It's very detailed. They even went to the de they even went to the trouble of, like, doing this, uh, of doing, like, frostbite textures, mul uh, different phases of frostbite for Ethan's hands during this scene. Where he's... Uh, and of all the times to bring back Evelyn, <laughs> like just here, right at the end for the the big twist revelation. But like, shit, my body, my thanks. <laughs> it makes sense that Evelyn would be here too because she's stored in the metamycete too. I mean, yeah. So, like, we're having... I, I, I guess I'm sort of surprised it How took this long for Evelyn to make an Why didn't she pop up after the first time he died at the beginning of the game? Well, this this particular scene in, in 7 only happened when Ethan was very near dying there, too. Yeah, but at the beginning when they get he gets taken in by, by Chris and his team, and then the whole car crashes, and then he dies, quote-unquote, and then wakes up in the snow at the very beginning of the game. I think this is happening mostly because he's in the village now, more so than mm, I guess. earlier. So it's a proximity sort of thing. I suppose, yeah. Yeah. But then does that uh, mean that... No, yeah, but then Louisiana's nowhere near this place. I, I don't know if the factory is... No, but Evelyn was there. I don't necessarily yeah. know that the factory is any closer to the me Metamycete than the, than the crash site was. I think they're both equally far away from the epicenter. Mm. But, like... <laughs> Evelyn and her stupid boots. Her DMs. I remember, the swamp I boots, remember yeah. finding those boots when I was exploring the house. 
boots with the jeans and the jeans Boop. and the jeans oh. and the jeans. Yeah, so right there, that is where fucking Ethan died. Yeah. Yep. Like right here. That's which, so which does make game. sense. It does make sense. Like you, he got this, it was, his face got, got it, caved in. I mean, he got his hands stapled on right after that. So yeah, this was. And the thing is, like, they did that on purpose because they know that they could just keep bringing him back, right? Like that's why they're fucking with him the whole game. Yeah. Well, I think Jack starts out like that, but then he gets really pissed off at Ethan because <laughs> he, because uh, Evelyn wants Ethan for her father, so Jack starts to genuinely start trying to kill him. Um, that whole You're a mad, wizard, Ethan. jealous rage kind of thing. <laughs> oh, boy. I I, I, for most of the games, I will say that Ethan is kind of fucking boring. Like, um, good everyman insert protagonist for the, for the lead, but for the voice acting he does while he's dying, I think it is a great yeah, performance. Yeah, it's good. I think what they- I was gonna say, yeah, like, he, he's, he's one of the more vanilla protagonists, but I, I, I heavily sympathize with the dude. Yeah. Yeah, well, more so in this game. In 7, he's just kind of there. Yeah. So... I give them I give them credit for making me feel sympathetic to Ethan Winters by the time we get to the end of this game. So it's like, yeah, you did a good job with him. At this point, yeah. I think I think they missed out on an opportunity to cut back to like I don't know Mia finding out the truth as well, and then she find out that she was sleeping with a basically a block of cheese. No, <laughs> she she knew she was. Oh, like, she knew. Before, before this scene, anyway. she was about to t to tell Chris what was up. Um, and it's, and it's implied, and it's strongly implied through the earlier, like, flashback sequence that she was hiding this from Ethan and oh. came very close, came very close to telling him. I guess but she did, then, she did work in, in the Louisiana shit, so I guess she would know, wouldn't she? But she's been trying to keep it secret because she doesn't want Ethan to be a lab rat, <laughs> you know? So. Even though he now is. Didn't they run, they didn't run tests on him when they brought him in after all that? I don't think they well, did, but then they didn't necessarily know that he stapled his that he had a hand stapled back on. Um, well, maybe, well, maybe they did tests while he was dead, and I would then think he came that back. The, yeah, no, but I, I would think, considering he was a part of a biohazard outbreak, they wouldn't just do tests on him by default because he was right up in Evelyn's face. Yeah. During the whole mutation thing, I would think that as a pharmaceutical or biological uh, company, they would. I think it's more the matter of it rebuilt Ethan, and he's degrading his mold as more and more time goes. So while he was, you know, stomped in the face, his body was still mostly there. So if you plug, you know, a syringe into his arm, it's still going to bleed. You're still going to see the muscles and the tendons and stuff. So. Right, right. I would think though that if there was some sort of like any sort of biological test afterwards, there'd be some discrepancy. Yeah, but I guess the thing was he wasn't was showing too, any symptoms either. So yeah, I think it's more no. a matter of it was so close to when he happened. It happened over the course of a night. There wasn't any time for it to really. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, like, but that, that, again, you like, don't just get one checkup after there this was thing. check back with you three months, six months, twelve months. There was know. also a wrinkle in that at the time Chris was working with Blue Umbrella, who he didn't necessarily trust yet. So he probably didn't want to give them free reign to do any tests. Obviously, that's yeah. Then I think about it. I think I think some of the files early on go into that. Yeah, and then there's the like. I think that, I think they were trying to get Ethan. And, then there uh, was Mia the for then testing. there was the huge fucking distraction that was Joe Baker rampaging around the swamp, killing everything in his quest to rescue Zoe. Um, yeah, might yeah. have kind of distracted them just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Imagine you, well, you you fucking try and do tests when you got an old man with his bare hands wrecking everything around you. Anyway, yeah, there is some magnum ammo on the other side of this area that you're likely to miss if you just look around here where the other ammo is. So uh, keep that in mind. Not that Ryan needs it. You know what I love more than anything is that like whenever like like just just then like what you guys were doing whenever you get into any kind of discussion about the law or the plot of Resident Evil and start actually trying to figure out how it works and does it make sense you then remember it's the same series with whoa this hall is dangerous <laughs> and then it's like does it need to does it need to be explained or is it just stupid like it's quite I mean, funny it can for be, the sake I mean, of filling out the part with commentary it's sure. it's yes, fun yes. to it's fun to otherwise it's just a, otherwise oh, it's just whoa, a let's faded, watch you faded what? okay I, I did a different recording session. Um, oh, okay. Honestly, though, like, 
you can do both is is another yeah, I thing. Know. It's, like, just, it's just like, funny to think. It's just funny it's, to think. It's entertaining and interesting to put yourself in the logic of a given story's world and try to figure things out as a character in that world would. Mm. Even if it's something like with a deliberately comedic or zany bent, it's interesting to pretend to exist within the logic of that yeah. universe and think about it from that perspective. Yeah. Uh, also, think overly thinking about that shit and getting into insane conversations is kind of the entire fucking point of this oh, yeah, channel. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just funny, like when you could like, because sometimes I have whenever this happens, I always have this image in the back of my mind yes. of, the de of the developers and the writers being like, I, I, "What the fuck? Are, what is everyone talking about? I just, I just idiots." Okay, this is this is this is so weird. How we just transition into third person person and then back to Ethan again. It did it a few times with the, with, with the merchant, but now it's doing it with the final boss. It's so odd. Hmm. How did I mean, that put the baby back together? We planted uh, the baby look, tree. We she, told you. Oh, she, yeah, the baby tree, right. She's made of mold. It's all mold. Everything's mold. Life now is you're mold. Just, uh, you're just doing that because you're an edge lord, aren't you, Miranda? You you well, did the crying the black tears. <laughs> you the did the black crying. tears intentionally. <laughs> doing the fucking My Chemical Romance shit. Your body is a normal. Yeah, black eyeliner starting to run off her face. I like the delivery of that eyeliner. line where she says, "Your body certainly isn't normal." <laughs> I, I don't know that 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 one line just sticks out. Wow! The statue attacked her. All right, Chris, you gonna Chris, you're gonna help? Going, 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 going. Chris, you gonna help? You gonna help, Chris? You gonna come down and help me? This was all an excuse to get Miranda right up in your face for another cheap 3D gimmick moment, isn't it? Yeah, huh? It, it makes gimmick. for it makes for a great thumbnail, though. It, 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 yeah, I, like okay, as a as a character, Miranda has some weaknesses. As a boss fight, though, Miranda, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> she's really good as a boss fight. No, she's a great boss fight. I'll give her that. The different forms she takes and the different phases that she goes through, mm. and the different and, and you have to keep track of what forms she takes and how to respond to them. And then as the fight goes on, her her transitions from one form to another become seemingly more random and erratic. She mixes this is it up. Very more. Dark Souls. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 Dark Souls. yeah, it kind of is. In fact, the music's kind of Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you, you have an actual gun. Of course, yeah. when, when you <laughs> have a dark souls with a gun. <laughs> when you have an infinite magnum like this, you kind of just fast track her directly to her final phase, don't you? Yes. More yeah. or less, yeah. Welcome. When she comes at you in the dark like this, it's actually really easy to just sidestep her constantly by just walking circles around the mm -hmm. outer edge. Just you know circle strafe around the it's outer It's funny that you mentioned Dark area. Souls because this bit in particular reminds me of. Um, um, has anyone anyone played Bloodborne here? No, oh, okay. I, I, I played a little, but I've, not far. I've watched enough. Okay, one, enough, one of the one of the one enough. of the later end game bosses has a move exactly like that, where it's like you get thrown into a pitch black kind of dream thing, and like they stop popping up from the floor and going oh, for you. Oh, jeez, we didn't even see half of her phases. Oh, Wait, is this she the has end? More phases? Yeah, there's she like this eagle like, phase as well. She has a spider phase. She has we a saw the flying spider. phase where she's flying around shooting like scoops of lava acid at you. She comes at you on the ground from multiple ways and directions. It's it's a really intricate boss fight, and mm -hmm. Ryan just skipped three quarters of it. Yep. I like how badass like, how... can she be if she dies to, like, seven normal-ass bullets? Those aren't normal-ass bullets. Those are magnum bullets. <laughs> the best bullets in the world. By Resident Evil logic, magnums are more powerful than rocket, than rocket launchers. launchers. Yeah. The Magnum was what killed Nemesis in the original game. So, uh, yeah. We did it. We saved a wild. <laughs> oh, and her daughter, too. Although, now you've got ash bits all in your ice cream. Oh, yeah. She was holding the baby the whole time, right? How did... Oh, and it... she she came back out with her clothes on, too. The baby... The baby <laughs> like was kind of... The clothes are mauled. The boss, during the boss fight, the baby was kind of held hostage above the arena, but uh, when... She melted. The baby came down. Fell down. <laughs> this <laughs> baby is still the scariest thing in the whole game. I've got a. 
hand it to Miranda. That was a tough <laughs> boss fight. Like, Damn it, Ethan. The interesting thing hey, about... I got, hey, I deserve, I deserve one after all the crap I've been through. The interesting thing about seeing his hand disintegrate like that is that by the time you see his hand again during this scene, it's actually partially regenerated again. Oh, <laughs> so, really? Yeah. It's it, it regenerates back to sort of a black, moldy, goopy hand. So... It's finished. You did it because I didn't want to. Yeah, I was right there, and I could have helped you, but yeah, you hadn't. <laughs> I reckon. I, I reckon there's. A, I reckon there's a snide kind of. They know he will regenerate if he fails, kind of thing. So they're kind of using him as bait. Slash, if he wins, then great, we don't have to do the work, kind of thing. Wow. So is Chris really no better than Miranda after all? Yeah. Yes. That's the. That's no. the ultimate philosophical question. Chris did not know. Is Chris secretly an umbrella? Chris did not know <laughs> until Mar un until Mia told him. So, ultimate plot twist: Miranda was Chris. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So Miranda kills Miranda disguised as Mia, but she's also disguised as Chris. And then the same time. comes out. <laughs> oh, maybe I'm mixing up his hands. Maybe it's just the other hand that I saw. Yeah, oh. it's just the other hand. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, so like. They they go to really great pains to make sure you never see Ethan's face during all of this. Yeah. So the only thing you see is his boring ass haircut and his James Sunderland jacket, and it's, uh, it certainly is a jacket. Keep the keep the jacket, Rose. Chris. I mean, Ethan. You know that because of all the biohazards around here, we're gonna have to burn this thing, right? <laughs> uh, she's made of the mold. She'll be fine. It's still gross. Ethan, I mean, what the fuck was supposed to do with this? Goodbye, Rosemary. Okay. Chris, Chris holding a baby is the most unnatural thing. <laughs> what kind the of fuck is. do I do with this? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with this potato sack? <laughs> Damn it, Ethan. Wait, what's the blinking were... light in the Mega My seat? It's the it's the bomb. That's the oh, bomb. Right. You were supposed to continue. The Redfield bloodline because Leon failed me or something. That's the meme, right? Come Chris, back. You know you could continue, and continue the Redfield the bloodline. There's this, there's this, there's this, there's this meme called Chris posting where Chris is obsessed with getting someone to fuck his sister because they're orphans, <laughs> see, and they want to continue the bloodline. Okay, but, but like Chris, Jill's been waiting for you to ask her out. For like twenty years, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, no. Whenever, whenever he comes across any kind of like hardship like that, he just drinks his problems away. Or maybe you know, maybe the steroids ruined his chances. Maybe yeah. that's all what right, happened. Chris. Maybe he's and when you're feeling sad, maybe what do you do? Infertile. Punch a boulder, Chris. No. Yeah, <laughs> Chris. We talked about this. Okay, yeah. so like, don't get involved. This is the most negative Resident Evil ending ever. <laughs> Like, most of the time, the ending of the Resident Evil games is, like, kind of a positive escape into the sunlight kind of thing. Or if there is something bad that happens, it's funny and undercut by some humor, like a cute keychain and a, and a thrilling uh, jet ski escape. Oh my god, I just thought about something. You know, you know how you just said, like, how it might be implied that Rose grows really quickly? Yeah. That would, that would explain the 14-pound baby shit. Oh well, yeah, oh yeah. Um, you know what I didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah. Wow, well, Resident Evil's clever after all. Well done. Jeebus. <laughs> <laughs> and then we look out, and then now that we're flying away in our helicopter, we look out the window, and there's some pterodactyls. And da 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 da. da. <laughs> I mean, all I just think is the Resident Evil. Yeah, that's all I think yeah. as well. So we yeah, this, this is all it says. It's Resident Evil, and uh, Chris is sad now. Where's the sex? Did all of Chris's friends yeah, die too? Where are they? No, Leon. Wait, no, wait, like all of like his is squad friends. No, they're, no, they're here. This, they're here. They're uh, this sort of comes at this, this sort of comes a little out of left field because we didn't see much of the BSAA, but the idea that the BSAA is using bioweapons is an interesting twist, and I'm wondering and the where the BSAA go with this. was like the group that Chris was working for in five. The, the BSAA is the United Nations Anti Bioterror Organization, and yes, Chris was Chris, Sheva, and Jill all working for the BSAA. Um, and Josh. You see, and, and Josh. <laughs> yes, and Josh. How do you not remember Josh? <laughs> How do I not? Who is Josh? <laughs> okay, oh, so like, there we yeah. Go. 
Uh, and now it's Resident <laughs> Evil helicopter. <laughs> and then a T-Rex just jumps out of the forest to drag the helicopter back down. Is yeah. That is that, is that, there we go. I was going to say, how, how, do you, how do you fit uh, the, the Tim Burton not now. helicopter? <laughs> you can't okay. whimsy your way out of everything, Tim Burton. So after you finish the game, you get a complete version of the fairy tale that actually finishes the story after the witch... Also, Traps Teddy, you haven't met Danny Elfman. He'll whimsy out of anything. I the like twist, <laughs> the, the twist is that the local fairy tale predicted the ending of the actual story. Well, I like to think that Chris just picked the book up and wrote his own ending. <laughs> <laughs> and, then the the good guy won. and then the good guy won. The end. So <laughs> then I blew up another mansion. What ended up <laughs> happening at some is that at some point, Rosemary actually, like found this book um, among her parents' belongings and realized that the story basically told her own story about her father's sacrifice to save her. and Then demanded became, royalties. And she became really attached <laughs> to this story, even though this, it was a story that her kidnapper <laughs> read to her as a baby rather than something her parents actually liked. So that's an interesting look into Rosemary's psychology. I hope well, there's you know, more getting interesting kidnapped stuff to find out. as a baby and then raised by a questionably ethical government organization, that's not going to do nothing to you. To oh, you she's Yeah, she's, she's it's just got Stockholm syndrome, it's all right. She's absolutely not like happy with the situation and you see that during the epilogue, but she's also like surprisingly keeping it together by teenager standards like she does sort of lose it at one point and and make a really kind of disturbing threat to one of her handlers, but like she chides herself for it immediately afterwards. So <laughs> it's. Um, I mean, the que the next question becomes: If she goes out of control, what happens to her? Mm. Well, I don't think she will, to be honest. Well, we, maybe, well, maybe, maybe, maybe the story that's why, all of the lords she gets are upset like, with like herself. helpful people. <laughs> she's not the she's not the first super powered individual to come out of the Resident Evil universe so oh i know it's just uh, that there's been a theme of every one of these characters losing control because of the 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 specific kind of mold and megamycete and all that shit so if she is literally a child of that then that means if she gets angry and loses her control of her emotions maybe she knows what will happen if she does and that's why she gets upset with herself well, when she does also the, the the stupid thing about this story and this little thing here is just that always kind of bugging me is oh no the dark witch trapped the daughter in the mirror and then the mother mother touches it once and she's three it's like wow great enchantment there which well there were two <laughs> There were two there were two issues with Evelyn. The first issue was that Evelyn was very maladjusted from the from the word go. The other issue was that she aged ridiculously fast. So there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of ingredients for a really bad ending in Evelyn's case, but it is strongly implied that Evelyn that that uh, that um, Rosemary is not flawed in the way Evelyn was that she is a perfect vessel so mm, she will okay. probably have a normal human lifespan unlike Evelyn and she has I, I still think she ages really fast she, and, like well, she will peak at like grow, early like late teen look, growing fast and aging fast are two very different things yeah no that's right because she could be like in the body of a 60 year old but have the head of a 10 year old like, you you can grow fast and then live forever. That's 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 that. The, in fact, the fact that you would grow that, that you develop that fast would strongly imply that you also regenerate fast enough to un, to like offset the aging process. She might live longer. Unless if it wears know. out your body, like you know, well, like, nothing in Resident Evil follows the logic of limitations on re, on cell regeneration or any of that shit. It just throws some science juice in it. But like. uh... Yeah. So, but she also has Chris Redfield, who, and, and Mia, uh, who are gonna uh, obviously make sure she grows up mentally sound. Also, this whole the uh, uh, off to the side I of the Evil Four is ending. That's yeah, off to the. It has to be. It can't be. Yeah, it's else. pretty. It's pretty similar. There's this. There's a story and um, playing out in images off to the side that mm -hmm. basically tells the story of the uh, of the Kadu infection that turned everyone into lichens and it ends on the very disturbing uh, image of the child seeing her father turn his head toward her and he's mutating into a lichen but 
the story here is uh, has uh, an undercurrent to it. Basically, a plague hit the city that caused people to start dying, and the Kadu infection was delivered intentionally to the villagers at, disguised, oh. disguised, as a cure, yeah. disguised as a cure. Whereas it was kind of an accidental infection in the case of well, the, isn't that uh, isn't that kind Donatos. of what they were talking about in five as well? Didn't that didn't Umbrella like send a cure for whatever was going uh, on there? What, 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 what do you yeah. mean by accidental infection? I thought that in, wasn't very deliberate. In four, what happened was they dug into the underground, found. Oh, you're talking about the initial yeah, infection? Yeah. Okay. They okay. dug into the underground in four, found the Plagueis, and it infected people through airborne contagion, and. Uh, uh, Sadler, I guess, got his hands on like the 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 the, the main control Plagueis, and that's how he became he he uh, gained control of everything. But um, in this case, it happened over a much longer period of time, and uh, the lichen infection was very very recent at like the tail end of Miranda's reign over this village. So all of what you're seeing here happened like very shortly before Resident Evil 8. Yeah. And um is something that was done by Miranda very much on purpose. So she turned all the people in the village to like in just a dick with them then? Um no, she was mostly using it to test the mold and find a suitable vessel for her re daughter thing. Okay, I think I'm getting confused. I'm thinking in five because there's the the tribal villages and stuff. That's the one where they they like yes. the reason that they're all infected is because Umbrella yes. were like, oh, we we've got a special well, cure for all your illnesses, and they just bombed the the villages and a, they all turned basically. Not Umbrella, Wesker and Tricell, okay, well, yeah, Wes but I, I, yeah, you, same yeah. same difference. Uh, they were working for, they they were working from an abandoned Umbrella lab where the progenitor virus was originally found, but. I oh like my god, how... the, the credits just spoiled the ending. It said Adult Rose in the credits. Look, it says it there. Yep. <laughs> oh, damn. Whoops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, I, I like how they... Uh, Miranda was apparently so into keeping the village in its old-timey sort of trapped-in-a-bubble form that she actually sent her her cure with a person who was wearing a plague mask. Yeah, that's from... really fucked up, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, they've, oh, they got vaccinated. Well done. 5G in the village pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, what's going on? Oh. It's, a, it's, a, it's a fucking Resident Evil 5 remake. <laughs> it's 5G. Resident Evil 5G. <laughs> Man, you know what? I want to see what a Resident Evil 5 remake would even look like with photorealistic Albert Wesker. It can't be worse Man, than the movie. I, you say that, but I still think 5 looks Yeah, great. I still think that. Like yeah, and I, but I think also it looks... manages to take the whole bright, harsh, like, African sun kind of thing. I think it works really well. 5 looks good, but it also looks very stylized in its anatomy like uh, I, I like that about it yeah but like uh, it, but it's a very different style from what Resident Evil is now where everyone has to look very believably human oh yeah yeah comparatively speaking sure but, so but, if, uh, if uh, we were uh, to see Resident Evil 5 remake now what I'm saying is that fucking Matrix ass Wesker would have to be translated into this style and I'm wondering what that would look like um uh, Resident Evil Afterlife Devil May Cry 5 is what it would look like what am I thinking Oh, maybe. Um, oh, yeah, it's Virgil. Still with blonde hair. <laughs> uh, and sunglasses, yeah. Okay. You still have to launch your <laughs> I like how they have this thing that says some models come from Evermotion. Which ones? What is Evermotion? Why, Why only some? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. So, I like this epilogue. I really do. Yeah, this is, this is nice. It's like we get to see Rosemary for like all of a minute. And she already has... 12 times as much character as her father. Um, like, just from a few expressions and gestures. It helps that they're not hiding her face from the camera. And she's got Mia's eyes as well, which is nice. Yeah, kind of. If this, she's supposed to be under, like, constant like, I, government honey, I gotta, I gotta stop because I'm getting motion right? sickness. Like, not, not constant surveillance. She's apparently allowed to go out on her own when she's not in work. They come to find her because they need her for an assignment. Um, but apparently she's considered well enough adjusted that she can integrate with society and just go about her merry way. Well, she's got an earpiece on as well, work. so I think she knows that it, she's always being tracked or whatever. 
Oh, well, they and just, how old is she supposed to be right now? Like a teenager or like a young it, adult? It's implied teenager. that they it's implied that they know her well enough to guess that she's here without tracking because of uh, the way the guy talks when he finds her. Um, but yeah, it's impossible to know her age. It is kind of at this point because yeah, what kind of headstone it's, it's doesn't really have the date of when he died on it? Uh, one that they want you know, to um, cover up the actual events behind. Yeah, like, they, they don't, don't, want, anyone, they don't, they don't want, want anyone snooping. Yeah, they, yeah, That's you don't usual. have to write on the headstone Ethan Winters who died blowing up a mold monster in the no, middle of Europe. No, because they 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 already had a cover story from before this where yeah, Ethan Winters died in uh, where Ethan Louisiana. and Mia both died in Louisiana. Yeah, so like uh, most people don't even know that they lived that they lived past. Well, then that. then put the fake death age on there then. We have a situation. Yeah, this is a really shitty joke, and this guy. Yeah. Honestly, would deserve it if, if if Rosemary just fungused his innards out. But why do I keep calling it fungus? Mold and fungus are different things. Molded his in innards out. But like, I I can't get a read on this guy because at one point he he give, he makes a really ill willed crack about Evelyn, and then the next moment Yo. he says something pretty sincere about her being kind of like her father. I, I talk about this clumsy writing because mm. I. If that was, I, I, yeah, I, I'm the same, but I, I can't get a read on. Maybe it's another case of the Japanese just thinking Americans are that obnoxious. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> they, they're not a, wrong. I mean, but, I mean look, she's okay, working. And, she's working with whoever these people are now. He's got sunglasses on. He's a bit cocky. Could be another Wesker thing. Like maybe he's a bad guy actually, and that everyone's oh, bad and none of these people have a happy oh, ending. Man. Or he's what's, just what's, the most stereotypical ass-looking secret agent on the planet. That, yeah, also, yeah, what's, that. what's interesting um, is in the sequence when you see the guy. You know, way off in the distance, you see like a figure walking down the road, and the car stops. If you, you know, break the camera and go over there, it is Ethan's model. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <That's> so <him. laughs> it's probably because they ran out of models. <laughs> um, I mean, possibly, damn. but also but, potentially interesting implications. So, but it is telling that she understood the joke well enough to be mad at it because it means she's fully educated about her origins. Oh, poor poor Ryan, just under 5 just over 5 hours by like 7 seconds. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's well, the, 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 the speed this, if only this, you weren't fucking lollygagging yeah. inside the elevator. If only you had an unlimited ammo magnum. <laughs> you could have gone way quicker. <laughs> All right, but that was fun. Uh, thanks, Caddy, for joining us. Oh, as no, always. we can't follow. Um, if anyone is interested or is sick of hearing yeah, about my, my stuff, then um, <laughs> um, I am Caddy Chorus on YouTube. I, um, you can find John's work at youtube.com slash some call me Johnny. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, if you like like really stupidly long videos where i just crack gags at every single possible thing i'm talking about all at once without much of a <laughs> like respite in between <laughs> and there's not really much of a review thing well, going on and like i'm not really that. dissecting or critiquing anything <laughs> then come in my come to my channel but come in my channel well you can do that if you want that's fine